Gonna try to help. How's it going, guys? Azuro Fanboy124 here, and I'm here today with all these other great reviewers to talk about this latest Game of Thrones episode, which was so action packed and well, action packed, but it was definitely incredibly entertaining and uh, definitely built up a lot of tension for what's to come with Tyrion and his trial. Uh, I thought it was an excellent episode, honestly. Probably one of the best of this season, if not the best. Arguably the best of the season. Uh, Tyrion, we were just talking about this before the stream ends. Uh, talking real talk, but like I said, this could be one of the cases where keeping it real goes wrong. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens with Tyrion going forward, and we'll go over each and every, every part of the episode step by step. So before we get into that, let's go with our introductions. First, we have Jim from Jim's Nerd Nation. Say hello. Oh, hello. Hello, everyone, and uh, happy to be back, man. So. All right, all right. Uh, we have Walking Double O Dead. Yo. We have Nick, a.k.a. Shot Red. Yo, what's up? Good to bring me back. And we have Anime Rick. Say hello. What's up, everybody? Nick should have said straight out of Compton, man. He should have. <laughs> well, that's what's Sorry, that's all I can think of right now, man. I just want to well, listen well, to well, some well, I'm, like, I'm kind of safe, and, well, I'm safe <laughs> and not safe, but most people don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I do want to give Rick his props, man. He was right yet again. Yet again, with uh, another prediction uh, about the trial by combat. I mean, like I said, uh, though it's it's it was pretty much assumed that that was going to happen. Tyrion did not get a fair shake in this trial, um, and it was pretty obvious that you know the trial by combat was the only way for him to get his fair shake in this trial because Cersei just did everything, everything in her power to fuck over Tyrion in this episode. But uh, before we get into all that, let's start off at the beginning of the of the episode. Um, with Stannis, okay? Yeah, my boy. <laughs> Stannis. Another thing that we called, which was pretty obvious, Stannis obviously uh, with Davos going to Bravos, which was pretty quick, actually. We didn't yeah. even see them say, we're going to Bravos. They just went to fucking Bravos and it's already there. Uh, which I kind of thought that was going to happen because in the in the opening, they showed Bravos for the first time. Mm. You know, in the actual opening for the Game of Thrones, so I was like, "Oh, they're going to Bravos today." Or oh yeah, yeah, I caught that in the that graphic. Really yeah, my, cool my, yeah, yeah, my son was really watching, cool. and he's like, "What is that? What is that?" And I was like, "Oh," and we we saw obviously then there was as it spun around, you know, they did an animation. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like the way it looked with the whole like yeah, I wasn't statue. expecting it to look all Spartanish. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it reminded me of that scene in Lord of the Rings the where they're going through the two the two statues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that looked very, very similar to that. It was really nice. That was really, really, nice. really cool stuff, really cool stuff. So the Bank of Bravos and Stannis have their little conversation with, obviously, Sir Davos. And at first, the bank's like, nah, you, how many ships you got? How many soldiers you got? 34 ships? Ugh, you guys Get work out. with you guys work with lineage and blood right, and we work with numbers, which is pretty much how, <laughs> that was good. I like that. <laughs> that dude, that dude played the perfect just sort of smarmy fucking banker, you know. Because anybody who's <laughs> ever tried to go to get a loan for anything, that's how those motherfuckers talk to you, man. They bring you in the door with the flashy guy. It's like we can do anything, and then when you sit down with the guy that's gonna get you financed, that's the dude. That's the dude right there. It's just like, all right, listen, man. I don't really care what the situation was. <laughs> this we deal in cold hard numbers, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was it was good. <laughs> I, I love Stannis's just like granite face, where he literally just didn't say anything throughout the entire scene. I don't know why, man. I just have this luck and love Stannis, man. He's such a like a, a wonderful <laughs> oh, yeah. asshole. I don't, know why. Man, I, I don't think he's gonna probably take over. That that's my though. That's my one problem with with Stannis. I'm glad he actually finally left Dragonstone and went somewhere, but he still didn't do anything. Davos did all the work. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. But yeah, but a, is, a, a, a good ruler though has people in place to do shit for him, man. I mean, when you think about it, a, a good leader hardly ever has to stand up, and they prove that time and time again. Like last year, last season, when uh, you know when uh, what's it, Joffrey was going and bitching and complaining about something, and Tywin said a king doesn't need to let people know that they're a king. You know, you don't need to explain mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So he knew. I, I saw. I felt like that too. But then I also felt like you know what, his presence there is enough. And 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 in his mind, that was that was honoring them as it is, you know. And Davos went and did it for him. We got good people in place for him, you know. Exactly. Definitely, definitely. And Stannis, that, but okay, he's a soldier. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, hmm. first and foremost, I think he's a, he's a soldier. He's not doesn't seem like someone who can talk his way out of many situations. That's not what he's good at doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's not a fast talker, talker at all. No. But Davos, on the other hand, that motherfucker is just he's 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 pretty smooth. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he's pretty smooth. He's the only knight. He's the only knight. He's a big. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, not talking himself out of this situation, but 
you know, in the past, obviously his fingers and everything. He must have talked himself out of that situation as well. Well, you, you know, know what what? He, he was a smuggler, so he had to learn how to get himself out of different, you know, many. Yeah, that's true. You know what yeah. I love is how when he goes and he like pulls the thing off, he pulls it off and shows his stumpy ass fingers and shit, and he's just yeah. like, he's like, here, look at this. I just wanted to let you know that Stannis, he's the man, man. He, well, he's fair. He's fair. He's gonna give you what you want. <laughs> he took my finger, <laughs> and I love that. You know how he compares like lending money to Stannis to like like Stan. Don't worry, Stannis will always pay you back. You know he's good for it. <laughs> so he does so come I, I found it really interesting how I, I figured everyone do one of two things. They're either gonna get money to get sell swords and build their army back up, or they're going they were gonna try to use the debt of the crown to in their favor. And in all actuality, they did both things. Yeah, yeah, because if he was that dead, I think that like he's like, look, Tywin is sixty-seven years old. Man, he got a lot of years left. Do you think Cersei's gonna pay that debt? Cersei? Yeah. Do you think that you know Tyrion, that little ass dude, is gonna pay that debt? I like how they did that. That was really well, I good. think what right. they did is they took claim to the crown's debt, but they also took claim to their line of credit. Right. As well. So it's basically like, you know what, we're going to take this, we're going to, we're like, just imagine, you know, they're just taking the federal deficit, but saying, yeah, but we can still borrow a few billion more, right, to get some shit in order. And that's, that's right. kind of what I took from it, like, they took both, you know, they took on the debt of the crown, which doesn't really, in the end, do them any good until he until takes over uh, King's Landing, until he is on the throne, but it allowed him to get a line of credit, so to speak. Uh, you know, with mm -hmm. with the bank, you know. So I so I thought it was I thought it was very cool. Yeah, yeah it was a well played move, very well played. Yeah, move. Definitely, definitely. So I mean, I think over the next couple episodes, we're gonna see them getting their armory and maybe sailing out. But I, I still I still don't know why they're gonna sail for King's Landing, considering that they know about the threat <laughs> of the White Walkers. That's still I mean that was yeah. it hasn't been addressed yet. It still hasn't been addressed, and I think that's going up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It's been the idiotic move for Stannis to do the same thing. Because the biggest mm. mistake that and what fucks Stannis over so bad is that he put his eggs in one basket. He put everything he had into that attack on Blackwater and it literally in every turn blew up in his face. Literally. Sure, but he had no knowledge about the wildfire and he I mean there was yeah. no way for him to know about that. I mean he had the numbers. He had everything going for him. Uh, he had Joffrey retard as a king. And, and he, you have to remember that he he, took, was only, he he had the city taken. Cersei was about to poison herself and her son. Right. The only thing that saved him was Tywin and Littlefinger and the backdoor deal they made with the Tyrells at the last minute, and Tywin riding out from Harem Hall at night under cover of night so they couldn't be... They, they rode for like two days straight to get there uh, to actually mm -hmm. to save the city right. from being sacked. So that was all... That was shit that no spies could have told him and he could have prepared for. Yeah, that was just an unfortunate yeah. run of luck for him. You and know? even despite that, if Tyrion didn't put up the original defense that he put up and stop them from originally getting into having that, that first wave of attack and stopping that, then even despite Tywin's appearance, he, they still would have sacked the city. They still no. would have been inside yeah. of the city. They would have been inside of the city a while ago, but even before Tywin could have even done anything. So yeah. it, it basically it was a perfect storm of... Of, of uh, him getting fucked over, essentially. Yeah, why the events went. just came together. My okay. feeling is that Stannis now, now that he has the money for the cell swords and he's not going to attack King's Landing again, I think his focus still is going to be on the north, but if anything, um, you know, I, I could see Stannis, um, you know, maybe trying to make some kind of pact with uh, the Wildlings, with this Mance Raider, you know, maybe giving them the north if they, he's got 100,000 behind uh, him. Yeah. I don't I know. Mean, well, I don't know. I don't know what the pirates going after. They're, what they're paying the pirates to do? What's he going to be? You know, yeah, the of? pirate. Yeah, exactly. What is what is what is he helping the pirate out for? You no, know, I think that pirate guy. He has a navy. Yeah, the pirate guy's just got a uh, bunch of ships, is what it is. Yeah, but he, 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 they're they for hire. I think that's what it is. That's yeah, true. I think that guy has a navy that they need. Hmm. Because they they still got to cross through the water. Yeah. That's the, that's the only way that he can go from attacking. I still think they're still going for King's Landing, but he's going to try like a different approach. As yeah. Far as help, yeah I, I don't know what other approach there could be though at this point. I mean, like, I, like, was, I mean, attack by land? You could have fooled. <laughs> it's I mean, a slower approach, but they could possibly like just start taking other other areas. Under you know, and you know, start instead of going for the mat for the crown. You know, start taking other areas around the kingdom and build your force and your camp even more. Yeah, because he yeah, doesn't have any animal rock. or any go house or something. Rock. Mm. Yeah, that's that, that's true. Castle of Lock Rock would be a good, be a good place to attack. I mean, mm. I mean, if he if he has as much money as I think he has from the bank, he can basically do what he wants now. The king, the kingdom is in trouble. Like they're pretty much exhausted from the fighting they've just you know been going under. Uh, they're in debt. 
they can't really do much for themselves. So, I mean, Stannis can do what he wants at this point. I mean... Yeah, and and the one thing that Game of Thrones has taught me anyway is that uh, really there's there's no loyalty to anything. There's only loyalty to who's winning at the moment. Uh, banner men come and go. They they switch sides based on who they think's going to come out on top or or what what threat there is to their people and their lands. So really, Stannis, yeah, he can go about it in a number of different ways because he could go and take out take on some different areas, and then as you conquer them, you you make them allies, you know, and that that's just that's right. how it seems to work. It's like okay, well, whoever didn't die in the battle, you overtook us, so now it's cool. We'll join you. We'll be your bannermen. We'll we'll you know we'll, we'll take your take you uh, all the way to King's Landing with your your claim to the throne. So, uh, but I think it was just him getting a good force to get that started with, you know, because four thousand yeah. is not a lot of men. So no, but I mean. Think about Daenerys. She only has six thousand on Sully. I mean, like, and how many thousand? She's got eight thousand on Sully. She's got yeah. two oh, thousand of the cell swords, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. and those are just the those are the actual trained fighting force. Um, right. all, all the all the slaves that decided to join her that were let free, I'm sure right now are probably in other positions. You know, taking up the, you know, whatever feeding the horses and shit like that. Right. But many of them, especially since she's planned her Esther, can probably be trained. You know, before she right. launches. And they said that. last episode that that force was barely enough. To, to take King's Landing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That they may be able to take King's Landing, but that's not going to be able to expand anywhere else. Because the main thing about King's Landing is you can take it, but if the rest of the, the realm doesn't decide to go with you, you only got 10,000 there holding King's Landing, you know, and the rest of the realm says, the fuck you are, you know, you can only hold it for so long. So I think that was where it, where right. it came into play. So, And uh, and, and again, that's why I think Stannis' 4,000 was really just kind of a piss in the wind, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Need, needed more. It's a good start, but yeah, definitely need more. Definitely need more. So, um, I think we can move on to the next part of the uh, the episode. Um, Theon's sister, whose name escapes me. Yara. 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 There we go. Uh, she comes to save the day. Gives this very inspirational speech and reads <laughs> off the little note that uh, that uh, Ramsey, you know, sent over to them about Theon getting his his uh, you know special place cut off. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, I'm like, all right, I'm ready, finally, and for me, the battle was anticlimactic. It was, yeah, exactly, yeah. It really was. It was, it was like thinking you were gonna have that great one coming, and then you just bust a nut, and you're like, oh no, it's over already. <laughs> three, it three pumps and done. That's, yeah, that's it was, the way yeah, pump, yeah, there you go. Or pump, pump, and a squirt, however you want to put it. It was basically that rousing speech that she had. I was thinking about it. And I was like, all right, you know, this had to remind. I had to even remember. Okay, this she's on her way over there, you know, and that because that was seven episodes ago. That was the end of last season. That she was like, okay, we're gonna take our fifty, our fastest boat, and our fifty strongest men, right? And uh, and it took her seven episodes to get there. So when she got there, I kind of forgot about them, you know. And then she gives the speech, and I'm like. And all these people are supposed to care why? Because this prince who's been gone the whole time and came back and has been shunned by their leader, the father, the self-proclaimed king, whatever, right? So basically the, the speech to me was kind of, uh, it was trying to make you feel invested in something that you really shouldn't. I mean, I feel for Theon, I do. But at the same token, I'm like, okay, whatever, man. And then, and then how it played out. I thought it was funnier Ramsey's ass coming out of there with all the scrapes and cuts and shit on him, having <laughs> sex with his shirt off, like, and he's like, "Yeah, I just got laid. Now let's fight." <laughs> he comes in <laughs> like fucking Thundercats, man. He comes running yeah. in, swinging, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I thought the, I thought the speech made sense though because uh, he was not only was you talking about uh, him getting his dick cut off, but also about the fact that you know he he flayed the men, skinned them. Uh, yeah. Ironborns aren't shit, you know. Basically, that was her way of rousing the troops. Yeah, that was kind of a pre yeah, pride of being an Iron Islander and stuff like yeah. that. Right, right, right. So yeah, they didn't take winter fights. <laughs> I'm disappointed in the fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she she yeah. abandoned Theon a little too quickly, in my opinion. I mean, I well, she's gonna die on I'm like, no, no. What got me was I'm like, she could have taken Ram, you know, Ramsey, but she just fled. Yeah. I mean, she yeah. Has more well, the dogs, the dogs. When no, yeah, she's scared of the dogs being released. Like, what? I mean, there's only like two of them. We sure Lady could have killed two dogs. Yeah, that's yeah. It just, I think, I think Does anybody the carry a bow and arrow? You know what I mean? Does anybody yeah, have like a dagger? Like, cool. They have armor on. Like the dog. What's the dog gonna do? He was a carrying sword. a battle axe. No, yeah. yeah I, Come on. Yeah. You know, the weird thing is, I think she left because she felt like it was more trouble than it was worth for her. Especially yeah. trying to. Okay. I think it was one of those things where on paper it was a good idea. She's like, I'll go rescue my brother for the glory of the Iron Islands. And then she got there and she's like, oh my god, he's seriously just like a dickless moron that's crying in a cage. And like, he's afraid yeah. of me. Like, this guy, he's he's so broken. 
like I would have knocked him out personally and dragged him out of there, there and then maybe him. slid his throat on the boat or something, you know what I mean, and <laughs> thrown him over into the water. At least give him death, man. You can see that he's he's clearly the, oh, it's just a shell of the man he was before. Yeah, and then to of... leave him and be like, and they're like, well, what's going on, you know? I mean, because obviously they've been sailing for months. And, oh, he's dead. <laughs> and they just took <laughs> off. <laughs> But it's well, a true statement, though. It truly is a true statement. Yeah, that's true. It is. It that's is. Yeah, that's he's, the kicker. Yeah. Being Ooh, the he is, that he is, dead. is dead. Yeah, but, but again, it, you know, like I said, for all the trouble they went through, it would have been more merciful to go and put an arrow through his, his head or a, a sword yeah, through his it heart. Might, it might come know. back to bite them because, obviously, they got this it little plan going like on with Ramsey that he's going to make – I'm assuming he's going to make Theon pretend that he's actually Theon. Uh, yeah, and, and then go to Mo Kalen or whatever she needs to take back to gain his father's favor, you know, so. maybe I like Ramsey, though. I like Ramsey. He reminds me of just, like, a really fucked up sort of, like, off-the-wall, like, Joker type of character, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not quite as sadistic yeah. as Joffrey because he doesn't have as much power at his fingertips, but he's completely off the rails, man. I love yeah. it. I mean, yeah. he's sitting there getting choked and shit while his chick's riding him, and he's just like, ah, he's got this look on his face like, yeah, you know? He does have a good crazy look, but I will say this, and I just thought about this now. Um, one of the pe- one of the the slugs that was thrown into the fire by the red woman is Balon Greyjoy, right? So yeah. this makes you think that maybe Theon will kill Balon. Oh yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. What, what I would like so, to see with this with this storyline of him going back and Reek being coming Theon is I would like it would be really interesting if they do it from like a psychological perspective that by being Theon he finds who he once was. And that's yeah. like his journey to being back, going back to his true self, and like he holds on to that, and that gives him the courage and strength to break away and fight off Ramsay. That would be really cool. And after him. and after he kills his father and proclaims himself as the king of the Iron Islands, he goes and gets his sister, and he actually has his penis back, and he has it up <laughs> to remind, and he puts it up on the top of that fireplace, <laughs> that mantle, and that that burnout fucking castle that the Iron Islanders live in, and he can sit there and he can think about how he overtook his father. And he can sit and look at his souvenir penis up on Oh, man. <laughs> souvenir penis. <laughs> um, I don't, cool I, I don't know, man. Back, But I don't know. I think his, yeah, uh, I think his on, arc dude. is... I, I don't I think, think he's going back good. to the Iron Iron still to beat Theon. I think he's going to try to... Because, I mean, remember, Ramsey's task is to take back that mosh. That's he's going to take back Mo, yeah, Mo, Mo Kalen, I think it's called, right? Yeah, so I think yeah. that's where Theon is going to go, pretending to be Theon. Yeah, yeah, That that's I was just goofing around with the whole thing because you were saying about how maybe he'd but no, that kill would be his really father. Cool, though, stuff, if he did me, I mean, I would love to see that too. Not the not the Dick Mantle part. But just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, taking his father and, and taking, you know, that, like I said, I mean, Theon's become a, a very tragic character within the series. From season two and onward, he's been a very tragic character. And the best thing to do with a tragic character is to put him on that like that that retribution kind of storyline. And I think they could possibly do that with you. Yeah, like, that'd be really cool. I, I would hope so. But I, I see him like if you ever watched Fate Zero, is that one the guy who had the berserker uh, guy with him? Either that dude, he just he just feels like the fall, fall lower he falls, the worse yeah. off he is, and he's never going to come back. I just I mean, don't I just don't see your death. Surely. I, I honestly like. I was a big Theon supporter for a while, and after this episode, I'm like, I, I don't think, I don't think he's ever gonna be back to what he was. Yeah, I mean, I had a little, I had a little bit of hope for him, just a little glimmer, you know. Yeah. But then it was all gone after, after he was like freaking out over it. And it was such a great psychological breaking that Ramsey did to him too, as much of a crazy fucker as he is, because pulling him out like he did and pretending like he was rescuing him and taking him out in the forest and then going and bringing him back to there uh, only to capture him again, yeah, yeah. that was I mean, and then all the torment that happened afterwards and the torture, that was psychological warfare at its best. Yeah. I mean, Theon is afraid to go with anybody. He didn't even know who it was. He's living with the dogs, for Christ's sakes, you know? Uh, so... <laughs> That when when Theon great. did what he did, I hated Theon. With a, I hated Theon for what he did to Winterfell. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And to betray Rob and everything. And I mean, but after about I, three I, episodes I of torture last year, you were you were kind of like, come on, man, this is this is enough. No. I, no? Yeah, because when, when I talked about Theon, I'm like Theon deserves whatever he gets. No, I take that statement back. I took that statement back because he didn't deserve. I mean, yeah, he killed those two kids, but God, <laughs> I mean, he didn't talk about this. Yeah, but look at look at look at the helm. He's killed a kid. Like there, I mean, mm-hmm. I, if you're if you're looking at it from like a uh, a normal world perspective, yeah, you, I, I mean, there's very few people that have redeeming qualities in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it from the world they live in, I don't think Theon's that 
horrible of a person, all things considered. No. He was he was not only was he dealing with the fact that he was a basically a, a slave, a cap not not slave, but basically being held prisoner, in captive. In a sense. He's a prisoner, yes. Mm. Uh from the Starks for so many of his years. And then he finally gets a chance to go back to his homeland and even his own father rejects it. He was mm. caught between a rock and a hard place. He had to make I mean, felt like he felt like he needs to do something in order to prove his worth. And I mean, although what he did was definitely wrong, it's definitely understandable why he did what he did. No, it is well, understandable. I I that that that, but at the same time, Rob said you are my took him as a brother. Like what he did to Rob was still like I, I get why, I understand why, but I still think what he did to Rob was fucked up. Like, and he is yeah. the, he oh, really oh, oh, the first you, seed of Rob's downfall. He did fuck over Rob. It. Daddy. I mean, I, I never counted as, um, him, him as an evil guy, but you know, it was one of those things where he had to make a certain call in order to, you know, try to gain favor with his father, which you know, end up bad. He was basically right. a person who was caught in the middle between two different worlds. Right, right. And he was not accepted by neither world exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, there's no rules yeah. in war. <laughs> well, yeah, so. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's why I always felt bad for Theon. But now, seeing the way he is, I still feel bad for him. I feel even more bad for him. But I don't mm. think he's. I don't just don't see any redemption for him. He's just too far gone. He bit his own sister. Like, arr, arr, just bit the fucking arm off. Like, no, I don't. I don't know, man. I, I don't see anything positive. Yeah, I mean, as far as I can see it, I, I'm, I'm only seeing Theon being as that that sick puppy that you you know you got to put him down or whatever, just laying there. Right. So no, I, I think he's gonna come back from it, but probably not like all the way. Well, he'll, he'll never come, you know, fully, fully back to being Theon, but um, there's, there's got to be something more for his character. He can't be in this rock bottom state forever and just die, or be, you know, like yeah, mercy. One, that's what I said. I like, what, mm. When I saw Theon in the trailer, like, what can they possibly do with Theon? Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Let's hope. Let's hope you're right. Let's hope you're right. <laughs> well, I think we've talked enough about Theon and all that's going on with that. Uh, let's move on to Daenerys. Uh, we see uh, a little scene with her presiding over the people and then giving her her, you know, all the problems that she's dealing with. Her dragon just goes up and burns some goats. That was pretty beast. That was such a nice that scene, too, at the beginning because it was just shot real well and there's the kid and he's all happy and he's running through and there's the backdrop and it's scenic and he looks over and all of a sudden the fucking dragon just like, whoa, it just comes up over and it just yeah. lays waste and I'm like, and the kid's just like, Ah, really? you know, like oh fuck. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was oh, funny. Yeah, that, that was a good scene. Dragon was gonna pick that kid up. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was gonna pick the yeah, kid up and carry him off and shit. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I thought the kid was gonna be in the bag incinerated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the bones they throw. I'm just bringing was the kid's bones. <laughs> I swear, it looked like the, the kid. Yeah, That's what I cool. thought at first too. You know. Yeah, but, it, I mean. I thought. I mean, I don't know how the kids survived that that inferno where all the other, <laughs> like, uh, you know, things got killed. But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So you know, then we get that, and then we get the other scene. I mean, this whole thing with Daenerys was really. I don't know what the point necessarily was, other than to show, show that she's, how hard being a oh, leader is going to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. For, yeah, for me, what I took from it is that you know, there's more to leading than just thinking that you're doing the right thing. Because this whole time, her platform has been freeing people, anti-slavery. And and in in some senses, it's come back to bite her in the ass. She found out about this city that's been taken back by this person, because unfortunately, there's more to life than just trying to do what you think is the right thing at the time. You know, it's not always black and white. And and I think that's what this showed was that hey, you know, there's <laughs> there's a little more to it than just answering injustice with justice, as she said. Yeah, yeah. She has to show mercy as well, like she was told, you know, a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. 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 That's why she has the advisors. Because, yeah. Because yeah, the biggest problem with the narrative right now. Yeah, that's why um, you know that's why she has her advisors with her. You know what I'm saying? When 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 they were talking uh, about the, her threat that she presides to the crown, they were mostly talking about the, the two people that she has with her, Sajora, and then uh, Sir, uh, yeah. Sir Barristan. Yeah, Sir Barristan. Uh, that have all these years of experience that can help her through this, which is definitely a major thing that she needed. She needs obviously because I think she's a bit a, a bit naive in certain respects. And, and uh, is it, I like yeah, how they brought up that Jorel was a uh, like a spy originally. So I was wondering, like, I like how a, they came. Well, they they finally wow. came out with that too. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the, and that's in the next scene in the council meeting because they kind of they confirmed it that Jorah was a spy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, right. and we kind of had a feeling from that note that he received that message right before the attempt. Bite him in the ass. About yeah. <laughs> 
But, um, you know, is it just me or is Daenerys, I don't know if it's just because there's the subtitles on the screen because they're speaking in the other language and whatnot, but does she not have the longest fucking title of anything? I mean, she's 228 yeah. people. She, she, she has got many names. Uh, many Minder names. of dragons, like, breaker nice. of chains, shower of titties, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> you're just like, God, <laughs> but not this season, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and they were going on and on, and I'm just like, fucking, are you guys, well, like, I'm nodding off, you know. I'm like, really? Shower of titties. Names. Oh, man. I, I really, I really <laughs> I really like what they're. I honestly, I really like what I think is going to be da Car Daenerys's new character arc. Well, all right, she's learning that it's easy to conquer, but it's hard to maintain. To rule, yeah. and I think yes, that's a perfect character arc because I think Daenerys going to Westeros, just like the White Walkers and Bran, that's the end game. Now her yeah. journey in the meantime is learning, is getting the tools and knowledge she needs yeah. to be a ruler. But the yeah. problem she needs, she needs, really needs to learn is she needs to start listening to Jor and Berenstain because yeah. that's what start, it's starting to blow up in her face because right. she's not listening to her councilman. Again, like you said, Zoro, she has very wise counsel, you know, very vet seasoned veterans. You know, I, I, well, it's funny. I think she wants to do things her way. Mostly. Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, that's her been... well here, here, here's the thing that I see is that, that she grew up very sheltered and obviously for up until a couple years ago living in the shadow of her brother who treated her like this possession and this, like, just, you know what I mean? And, and she and she grew up just like Arya Stark did, basically in a, in a castle, in a setting where she didn't see the outside world and just heard about what it was about. So this is her experiencing the outside world and thinking that she knows it all and finding out that she doesn't, that there's some older people that... Right. On that, that are her advisor that she and she's making these mistakes, but she's trying to learn from them. And I think that's the that's the, the greatest lesson is that she's learning from them. She's not being so pig headed that she's continuing to compound upon them with the no, my way is right and nobody else's is. You know, yeah. so, that's the way the Targaryens are, though. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I feel though, I agree with you, Rick. I feel that the the attack on King's Landing with the dragons and the army and everything else. I feel that that all comes at at the end in season ten or whatever we wind up being to, and that's the end game. You know, um, mm -hmm. White Walkers, man. Raider, everybody just fucking attacking everybody. It's a whole season of just nothing but action, you know. Can't wait for that, man. It's like seriously, it's like Braveheart without the kilts. You know what I mean? What I, what I, I'm very scared though because Tywin asked for a pen and a letter, and it reflects Daenerys. The last time Tywin wrote some notes, the Red Wedding happened. Yeah. So I, I'm true. really scared. I'm really scared for Daenerys. Like, but I'm going to assume it's going to be sent to one of her advisors. But I'm really scared. <laughs> Hey, if you think Tywin's gonna take her out just by writing on the letter and stuff? Hey, he took out Rob <laughs> with Tywin. Tywin. It's that's true. Hey, that's hey, true. hey, but you needed somebody. The pen is stronger than the sword. Yeah, yeah. that's a saying or something. Yeah, yeah, Ty, yeah the, the pen is truly mightier than the sword. Yeah, but uh, Ty, yeah, Tywin's like the freaking emperor from Star Wars, man. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> I, got no, I got no problem. I, think he's he's evil. Evil. I, don't think, I don't think he's that evil. I just think. Oh, it's kind of hard. We had a discussion about this once before. I'm just talking about, you know, just being in control of his shit, man. He's okay. just an opposing so presence, and he's just sort of like, you know, when he talks, people listen, you know. Virtue, virtue, virtue. Except for the Iron Bank. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, Iron Bank has such a hold over him now. He knows, that he, you know, Tywin knows that it's a problem. That's why he's he's getting everyone on the side that, you know, or his enemies, so to speak, so. Yeah. Um, with, yeah, so we'll, I think we'll the important thing about that is that Tywin, he explained it to Cersei, which I thought was important, but it was basically like a nobody knows that. It's it's acting as if. We're the Lannisters and we're still acting as if we're the richest, wealthiest family in the realm, even though we're not. Yes, we're living on borrowed money and credit and everything else, but he's smart enough to make the right alliances to go and ease the burden. Uh, and, and ease some of the, the pain that they've been put into, uh, obviously, by Littlefinger and all his crazy machinations that he's had over the years, you know, driving the crown into debt and everything, you know. So yep. yeah, that, is, that is true. It's all about keeping appearances. I didn't even think of that. You think little, so you yeah. think Littlefinger purposely dropped... Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Purposely what? What was, it, what was, it, what was yeah. he the master of coin, though? Yeah, he was the, yeah, yeah, he was the master of coin. Yeah. If he put the, the crown in debt like that and set that up, too? Yo! Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, it, was it the crown in debt because Rob just didn't, uh, Robert, he didn't, just didn't give a shit and just spent... He was spending a lot of money, but yeah, but if, yeah. if Littlefinger was the master of coin, so he could have technically... Little, yeah, Littlefinger, yeah. 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 But who was going to get... Do you even think Littlefinger could have gotten in the way of Robert basically spending his money? Do you really think so? 
The, I know, but even if he's trying to stop him, you think Robert's be like, you know what, you're right. No, he's not a reasonable person. He just didn't give a shit, Robert. I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure he could have convinced no, him. I was going to say, even if he was Master Coin, he could have told Robert, but he didn't get two fucks about it. He, he probably could Yeah, he wouldn't have mattered, but it was his business to keep the crown out of massive millions uh, of debt, which they're in yeah. right now. Yeah. And and he, because I just rewatched the series and got done about a week or two ago, and I believe it was in season two or three in a conversation he had with Varys that you know he alluded to that, and that was part of his whole his whole chaos. You know that they had, and I don't remember who he was talking. I thought it was when he was talking to Varys, or maybe Varys was talking to somebody else. But it was something about Littlefinger, um, you know, Littlefinger being in charge of him being the master of coin and the crown, you know, being millions in debt. So, uh, so that's what I. So after last week's episode and the reveal that Littlefinger's like the fucking grand master of everything behind the scenes, I just I kind of you know put two and two together and assumed that that's what it was. You know, that, that's a good point, though. I never thought of that part either. Fucking little thing, man. He's gonna win this shit. Watch, he's gonna win this shit. (laughs) (laughs) He's not. He's not. Nobody's yeah. gonna like him. Nobody's gonna recognize him as king. But he's, he's just gonna, gonna go be sitting, he's, he's just gonna be sitting there on the Iron Throne with that fucking mustache, man. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, anyway. All right, oh, let's move on, and we'll talk about. We just kind of alluded to it and talked a little bit about it before, but the small council meeting was the next scene. Fuck um, yeah, dude! Really dude. awesome scene right there. You know, I really, like, really oh. enjoyed that right there. Dude, anytime Oberon is on screen this year, this guy is just fucking hitting it out of the park. I don't know if you yeah, guys agree or not, but this uh, guy is just. Like, yeah. I believe that this actor is, is Prince Oberon uh, Martell. You know what I mean? This dude just fucking... Oh, he's so slick. Yeah, you know? yeah. really slick. Yeah. Do we just have to have this meeting so early? Yeah. Because <laughs> you know he's having his... You know he's having his, uh, his, his bisexual fucking frat parties at night in the whorehouses all around King's Landing, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, seriously, there's sometimes... Cersei should just not really talk. You really should not talk sometimes, man. Especially, in, oh my God! Yeah, what, what did um? Got a mouth to say. Yeah. yeah, what did she say about Daenerys? She said, "Oh, oh, little and girl. three, th- a little girl with three baby dragons." And then I love Varys. Varys yeah. is like getting bigger every year. My because <laughs> Varys is so slick when he says he's always got some smart ass shit to say. And like when they're talking yeah. about uh, when they're talking about uh, uh, how, how many uh, people were killed by the Hound and everything, he's like, "I believe." Fuck the king was mentioned. <laughs> it's just how he says shit, man. Like I just like to have that guy come you know like what? speak. Oh, it. Oh, I, 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 kind of mad? Darius is like the one dude who's the bird of Game of Game of Thrones. This fool has Facebook. Like he just knows too much shit. Like he knows what everyone's doing all the time. Birds, man. Man, he's got his little birds. He's got his Twitter going. I mean. <laughs> Seriously, he knows he's 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 hey, 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 I'm gonna say, man, you know, you know, Varys is the NSA. He's watching you. But knowledge is power, man. Show, like, knowledge is power. Everyone died. How did he know the hound says "fuck the king"? But there was probably well, there, there were witnesses somebody. Um, yeah. During that whole end, somehow yeah. got back to him from one of those people that they saved in the end. That the uh, that the king's men were basically torturing and holding there yeah. and taking their chickens. Because you know, after he killed everybody, the hound had himself some chicken. You know, so there's a few people, and somehow that got back to Varys. But yeah, Varys, Varys is very much, man. Yeah, he's he's that dude. He's connected, man. You know, I'm going man. to live tweet during this episode. You know, <laughs> fucking yeah. guys, he's he's slick too. You know, he's slick. Yeah, so. But I like I, how Oberon didn't even get up for Tywin when he walked in. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. else, you know, I mean, even Mace Tyrell, he's the fucking he's he's the he's the secretary. Oh, I hate my Mace Tyrell. He's the head <laughs> bitch of the realm, paper. you know. The <laughs> mess. Oh, it's a pawn, the tool like a, oh uh, god, yeah. <laughs> the title. But um, like over to like, you better not make me master a coin. They're <laughs> <laughs> all titles and stuff, and that, that's a good point. Like, there's no one managing the checkbook right now. That's probably Tywin himself. You're not about to say yeah. maybe Tywin. So double duty. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, okay, so we learned a couple things here in the small small council meeting. First, like I said, we talked about the Hound, and then now they put a bounty on him, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, three hundred, uh, three hundred gold, hundred silver or something, or yeah, something yeah, like so. Hundred so gold. That, that like, he goes, how much would it cost? And he goes ten. He goes, yeah, make it hundred. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So they're they're looking to take down that. I didn't think that they would actually be after the hound, but considering they killed the guys, well, he did, he did kill some highwaymen, so. You know, yeah, I mean, you still have to show that you have the power and the force in the realm, and honestly, the hundred crowns that you know that he put on that bounty or whatever. First of all, it's only a bounty if somebody actually kills him and turns him in. Yeah. But I think it just shows the stance of the crown that that shit won't be tolerated. Even though Tywin could give two shits about five of the king's men getting killed, I think it's very much like, hey, let's just take care of this threat. 
You know, we'll, we'll put a yeah. bounty on his head and what's 100 crowns. You know, when you put it against the 20 million or 15 million or 10 million, they're in debt. Who cares about 100 extra? I mean, aren't, they, yeah. aren't they, like, close to, to where they're supposed to be going anyway? I mean, Yeah, like, they're in the Riverlands right now. Right. I guess they're making their way to the Vale. Yeah. yeah, I thought that they were near the Vale anyway. I mean, they've been walking. I think they're pretty close, but as far as I understand it, between some of these major areas, I mean, it's it's, it's literally weeks of travel, you know, day and night yeah, traveling. Like, you know, right. if from I King's walk Landing, can be months, and and by horse, it can be weeks. You know, I understand so that, but how that. how long will it take for this information about this bounty to travel? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, 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 think pretty, I'm think pretty sure it probably travel pretty fast because you know how people always it's have like, yeah. you know, like kind of like kind of like how people have like ride on horseback with a newspaper system or something. They probably like people who, like you know, the raven. Down. They send, yeah, yeah, they, the they, they, yeah, they send ravens out to probably every major town in this net. But even when uh, the hound gets the veil, it you know who knows what's going to happen. I mean, if he's yeah. going to dump off Arya, he's not going to like hang out at the veil. You know, he's going to go and get himself some money and. You know who knows what he's gonna go do? Drink and eat chicken. I don't know. Hey, well, know? the problem is so, him getting there because well, it depends. It depends what's happening at the Vale at the time. I'm still under the impression that that obviously that it's possible that after the now that uh, a little finger married uh, uh, the sister um, Eliza, Eliza now now she's she's <laughs> eligible to die at any second. And if yeah. that happens. Fuck, man. That's there's gonna be a lot of chaos going yeah, on. Yeah, I think yeah. Liza's accidentally gonna get drunk and fall down the uh, the what do they call that? The infinity door or whatever. The bottomless pit. You know, like, like, oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Never saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that not. Little Finger needs a really cocky badass fighter as his like bat bodyguard. He can hire the Hound. <laughs> But the Hound does need some muscle. Like, to stand it does by. need some muscle. The thing about the out. Hound, though, is that he says that he's going to go to Bravos after this, right? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 And we know for a fact that Arya needs to go to Bravos as well. So if, yeah. if, if, if Miranda's dead and he's there and Littlefinger's staying in control and we, we know that Miranda's dead, then the Hound's not going to get bring her to the Ant because he knows the Ant's dead. Yeah, so I, I think that he never makes it. I think he never makes it to the Vale. You know what I mean? I think something yeah. happens to sidetrack them. Maybe the bounty that gets put on in his head. Who knows? You know what I mean? Right. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know, because because technically now the Vale having Littlefinger, nobody knows but us that Littlefinger's bad. So mm -hmm. him him marrying Liza Aaron and bringing the Vale back into the fold of the Seven Kingdoms is that on paper and for all intents and purposes now they're part of the crown. Uh, so, you know, if he does go, maybe he gets deterred and sidetracked on the approach to, uh, you know, obviously into the veil because of this bounty that's now on his head, you know, and decides well, to... Uh, you know, thing, though, too, like, like, Arya's never met Littlefinger, but the Hound does know Littlefinger, and I'm sure, you know, pretty much a lot of people in the, within the court know that Littlefinger is not... Arya, Ar Arya's you know. met Littlefinger. She, she had to dodge him that whole conversation when they were in... Uh, at, yeah, when he met with Tywin Arya, and Arya, Hall. That's the thing, though, too. I don't remember Arya ever coming across across Littlefinger in season one when they were in King's Landing. Sansa, yeah, because yeah, Arya Sansa. was always running around with uh with her dancing teacher. What's his face? Cyril. Yeah, yeah, yeah what's that? Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? But I don't think they're gonna get to the veil, or they're gonna like same thing with the Red Wedding. They're gonna get to it and and under, and find out about the chaos and then just get out. You know what I'm saying? Cause, no. I mean, if if Arya is brought to the veil and, and Littlefinger. No, uh, to Littlefinger, then then obviously, I mean, I don't think that the Hound knows that Littlefinger is right now in the veil. Vale. And if he learns about that, he for all he knows, Littlefinger is still loyal to the crown, so he has a bounty on his head. He's, mm. he's gonna yeah. he's gonna die. He's not gonna go to the veil. Vale. So he's gonna go right to Bravos and maybe take Arya with her. With that's him. what I was thinking. Yeah, now that maybe that's why that bounty is gonna play into yeah, yeah some sort right. of importance in deterring him from the veil. Vale. Yeah. That would make a lot of sense. And we need to see Arya go to the the Bravos anyway. Meet up with the teacher because I know for a fact he's not fucking dead. And uh, the assassin. And the fight now. What's the other guy's name? Jack and Hagar, or is that yeah. Jack and Hagar? The guy who gave her the Thanks coin. The yeah. So I think it's all gonna culminate into that. Then that would be the best possible scenario, in my opinion. But uh, we'll, mm -hmm. see. we'll see. We'll see. Got a little, got a little topic there. Um, but okay, after the whole small council meeting, we get more Varys and more Oberyn. Uh, I love that conversation. I, I fucking love that conversation. We learned that Varys um, is from, uh, what was it, Essos? Essos, yeah, Essos. Yeah, we learned Varys is from Essos, apparently. And uh, Oberyn apparently lived five years in Essos, so he was able to find that out. Um, and that, uh, was it, that Varys actually has interest in the throne. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I didn't think he did. Uh, I honestly didn't think that he did, but apparently... Maybe it'll be that, that eunuch motherfucker that makes it to the throne. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I don't know how he's going to Zor, I mean, I mean, Rick, you, you know we talked about Varys before, uh, him getting the throne. Now now we know it doesn't seem like it ain't that far-fetched. 
first we were joking about. No, it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like various. Mm-hmm. He's he's like the la- He's like the greatest mysterious character in the series at this moment. Yeah. Because we don't know what he wants, and he hasn't made his big move at all yet, whatsoever. Littlefinger's obviously made his big move, or his first big move. Varys is still just chilling, like waiting for the right time. So. He's just waiting for all the cards to fall in the right places. When yeah. I, but I, I still don't see Varys as someone that actually is on the throne himself, but I could see no. Varys putting putting things in motion to put the person that he thinks is best suited right. to run the realm that he can best work under and control things. Because I still remember yeah. back when in, fir- in the first season when Ned Stark asked him, who are you loyal to? What do you want? He said, the realm, my lord. Right. The realm. Yeah. And it really seems that he is not, whereas Littlefinger is the causer of chaos, he is the one that tries to go and settle things down and do what is best at this particular moment. It doesn't matter if it's right or not, it'll calm this thing down and people yeah, will die here. here you know, so. down. You know, he, he tries to be, he tries to be that counterbalance. You know, but uh, so I don't know, I don't know what his ultimate, you know, goal or machination, machinations are for the throne. Uh, but yeah, when I, I kind of like that when he like <laughs> kind of glanced over at the throne and I was like, oh Jesus, you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, exactly. But I like the fact, it's like uh, I don't like anything. Uh, you know, say what, what do you say exactly? Yeah, he was uh, basically uh, like, during have any preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he says yeah. Yeah. yeah, he said he doesn't have any the absence preference. of desire. Yeah, absence of a desire leads people to pursue. I mean, other things is what he says. Yeah, yeah. that that's a great l- little line, right? Yeah, there. because then Oberyn says like what or something to that effect. That's when he looks at that's when he looks at the throne. Yeah. So I thought that was done well, you know. Exactly. So, that was good. That was good shit. Very good cool. Shit. But um, yeah, let's uh, look at some of these comments. Apparently, uh, in, I just read one of the comments in the book. In the bag, it was actually the kid's bones. It wasn't actually the goat. Ah, okay. So um, that's a little censorship. Sense the kid, little yeah, more they'll have more impact. Then why? Why would this? They not do that. I guess even on HBO, you can't show dead kids' bones. Spice. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? Very um, good. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth Thor says Cersei is nothing but a hater. She cares about Danny being the boss. Cersei acts like it's nothing out of spite. Cersei started off having power because of her dad, her family, and her husband. But Daenerys is a boss. Yeah, basically Cersei ain't shit. Daenerys is a shit. Uh, that's basically what he's. Saying. I don't even know why they still let Cersei come to the meetings and shit, man. Listen, <laughs> your, your husband died and your claim to fame died a couple years ago, honey. Okay, one one illegitimate bastard son was on the throne for a couple of years. He was poisoned. Now you got the other one who's underage, and Tywin's pulling all his fucking streets. You don't even need to be here anymore. She's you can just show smart. up to the parties, and we'll just keep she's, your wine decanter. She's fed. not even that smart. She's oh, like, she's, she's conniving, but no. not smart. Yeah, I mean, she, no. she's like that old widow just nagging, you know, across the year and stuff. Yeah. Seriously. Like she is... She, she's, she's like long. palace smart, but not like world smart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's, yeah, exactly. She can play the game, but when it comes to the overall intelligence, like, I think uh, Tyrion said it once, she's she got above average intelligence. <laughs> 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 I call her the one-hitter quitter. Yeah, there you go. One I call her the brother, brother. I call her the brother fucker, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, okay, so now let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this episode, and that was the Tyrion trial. Oh man, all I gotta say from this trial, and this is jumping the gun a bit, but I'm gonna say this, man, fuck Shay, man, fuck no, no, Shay. Oh. I mean, there's a part of me that thinks that maybe she's being manipulated, obviously by Cersei, yeah. or threatened, or something along those lines. Oh, so yeah. I'm gonna hold complete. I'm not gonna. Mm-hmm. I'll reserve some judgment, but still. It's very good of you. you. You know, it's funny. I agree with you at that point, Zoro, but I, I have, but somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm thinking she ain't really that bright. I, I think mean, she's doing some of this out of spite as well. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, told me wanted to take him to the chamber for the wedding, so maybe he... No, no, but, but, but check this out. It makes sense. Uh, the reason why I think she ain't really much that bright is because out of how many times have what Tyrion told her to you know, leave King Landing? She mm. never, ever listened. It took him to right. do something drastic in order well, to make you know, lead. Yeah, and she was the, I, I, I said it the, towards the beginning of the season, most dedicated prostitute in all of Westeros. She seriously <laughs> not, is. Not she, that dedicated. She knew what it was. Well, not, not now, but I'm just saying she knew what it was going into this whole thing with Tyrion. It was an arrangement for sex, man. And and once yeah. things got going and it was a, a, a hindrance for her to be around, she needed to bow the fuck out, you know? Mm-hmm. And she didn't. She put Tyrion in a bad position. Tyrion eventually had to go and have that... that that scene where he wanted to push her off, and I believe in the second episode or the first episode of this season, and she should have been gone, you know. She and now she goes gone. and comes back to haunt him. And you know, the trial was a farce to begin with, but at least there was reputable people up there lying and twisting the facts around. 
when do we take lowborn horrors as 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 admissible testimony at the crown? You know what I mean? You fuck people for money. I'm sorry, but I don't believe what you have to say because you have sex with people for money. So you'll yeah. lie for money, won't you? I mean, yeah. you know, to me that was like the biggest slap in the face, punch in the dick ever. You know what I mean? It was like really, <laughs> yeah. really, yeah, just, you know. But you know, to agree with uh, you know Tyrion is you forgot all those people were. You know, not good people to begin with, anyway. You know, people just sitting there at the sidelines. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all, they're all puppets and pawns, and you know, just looking to you know to get a seat at the table, you know, however they can. But you know, so yeah. So I mean, T Tyrion and all, everything he said was wonderful. It was rousing. But I think that the the nail in the coffin of Shay coming in, everything was just you know, I, I don't know. I, I I can't be. I can't take the high road like Zora. I can't reserve judgment. So I mean, have to reserve a little bit of because I mean, we don't know the circumstances of her being on there on trial. We don't. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, helping, I mean, there could be. Something that they're holding over her head, or so I don't know, but she doesn't have anything though. For yeah. I understand, I mean, what are they going to do? Know. They're going to they're going to threaten to kill her if she doesn't testify against him. You know, yeah, like, she's, you, she's like, you think the, you think they're saying, not going to kill you anyway as soon as the trial's done? I all mean, right, she on, did say really? a couple episodes. I don't care what they do to me. So I think that there's a lot of like ninety percent of it has to be spite. I I just think it has to. Yeah. Well, she didn't seem torn. Didn't seem torn, sorry, she spite, didn't seem torn I, about the laws that she was giving. She literally didn't torn at all. The perfect scenario of a woman sworn. Hell hath no fury yeah. like a woman because sworn, man. Honestly, all right, like, like, a lot of what Shay said was true to an extent. It was twisted because, like, all the things about how she called her a lion and lying and everything, those are those were true statements. Yeah, those but, were, yeah. But in Shay's mind, the stuff he said about, I think the stuff she said about referring to Sansa and everything, I think she really believed that in her head because her jealousy definitely destroyed her character, you know, destroyed her in the end. You think, you, yeah, you think the jealousy, you, know, you think she I, let I this... That, that whole situation know. seemed like she was reading it off a piece of paper. Yeah, and her. to me, she I always... referred to Sansa, I think she really believed that. I think that's how she looked at that situation. And, no, and I she, agree with you too, Rick. That's why I said yeah. always based on her intelligence, you know, how the way she thinks. And she, she went and took that route, also probably, you know, mine with the faction. She thing. could have. She could have gotten so twisted up with the faction and everything like that. But ultimately, I feel like she was led, uh, that she was very easily led, you know. And, and that, she, you know, I, if I had Shay, I would take her to Ramsey. And I'm like, here, Ramsey, here's a new play toy for you. <laughs> That's what needs to happen to Shay. Damn. Shay. Damn. That's a bit <laughs> Look, look, she look. I mean. Up. Rick gives no punches, man. No, it's her, it's her, yeah. Oh, she's dead to me. She's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like Shade. Like, like, I, I like Shade. I, I really liked her. She was really, she brought a different side to Tyrion. She was a she great... Did. She did. She was great in the second season, but she became a, a nagging, like a nagging old wife in the third season, a very jealous, catty bitch, you know. And then by this mm -hmm. season, I was just, I was tired of her. I was tired of seeing her, you know. It's like Tyrion was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta stop this shit, you know. And she just didn't stop, you know, just kept on. So, you know, but I, I but honestly though, man, I got yeah, I think I think I like Jamie. I like what Jamie did, uh, going back and, yes. and talking with Ty. I think that since the uh the whole rape scene with Cersei, I think just I just think it wasn't filmed well and it wasn't it wasn't shot very well. And and ultimately though, because everything that's happened since then with him giving Brienne the sword and, and going off with Pauldrick and going on their quest it, it, he's 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 like the knight, uh, you know, the uh, like a knight in shining armor right now. I mean, he's doing all the right stuff for redemption. And uh, I mean, even when he walked in to get Tyrion, you know, with the with the guards and everything, and Tyrion, I love how Tyrion stands up and he's like, "Oh, oh have I been <laughs> have I been pardoned or have I been acquitted or something?" And he's just like, "Oh no." But I thought that was great when he went in and during the interim, the break, and he talked with Tywin, you know. And uh, I felt like Tywin was expecting that, you know, coming because Tywin was just like, "Sure, done." And he gave him all the conditions, you know, that he'd have to meet and everything. But I still thought it was very noble of Jamie to come in there and go, you know, you know, you know that this is a farce, and you're in a position where you're not going to have any living heir, you know. What are you going to do? Have some bullshit nephew, some no name nephew, take over the, the family name? So I just thought it was great, you know, what he did and uh, really redeemed himself in in my eyes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so. but uh, Tyrion wasn't having any of it, man. Well, you know, he gave the same you know, offer to Ned Stark, and you saw how that turned out. Honestly, I think Tyrion was down for the plan until Shay walked in and did what she did. Yeah, yeah. I think Tyrion would have reluctantly done it. Yeah, because it was yeah. because even because even once he said that, you know, Jamie was like, "Yeah, but father won't do that." You know what I mean? Like, he he may hate you and everything else, but here he, he's going to keep his word. He's not like Joffrey. Joffrey I'm, not so I'm, not so I'm not so convinced. I'm not so convinced. He he felt he like this whole trial. He felt betrayed. It seemed to me he felt mm -hmm. incredibly betrayed, especially Varys 
and uh, Avishé, of course. Just the entire, all the people basically just twisting and lying uh, to bring him down. Uh, and he, you can see it on his face. He turned around and he fucks. I saved all you fucking people. <laughs> You'd be dead right now. Santa's would have raped your corpses if it wasn't for me saving this entire goddamn city. Uh, and even he goes to Varys. Like, Varys, you once said to me that the history books would forget me, but I, you, you know that you know, people would know that you, you, you saved us. But is that still true? And the Varys like, yeah. I, I mean, fucking, well, no, he, he said he, would, he wouldn't forget it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Varys is like, you won't be forgotten. You yeah, know, yeah, you'll yeah, be remembered yeah. for something. So basically, they need a scapegoat now, and Cersei yeah. has set it up to where there's going to be his head, you know, and, and there's there's going to be blood for it, you know. And it was, right. but but you know, but and then if you remember, everybody that came in, nobody lied. I mean, yeah, Maester Pycelle, he said about how he's thrown in the dungeon and everything, and then all these things were missing, and he accused Tyrion of taking them. Um, but other than that, I mean, that, that no, 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 Cersei, everything Cersei said was a lie. Right. Well, no, I was going to say that Cersei, it just bullshit just poured out of her mouth. Well, not Cersei, the quote like that. Cersei, Cersei, Cersei just quoted back what Tyrion oh, yeah. said to her. That's, yeah, I was about to say, it was all a lie. Like everything, everything after though. Okay, yeah, she she mis she used misused her quote, but everything else was a lie. Like Taking outright. And Varys obviously lied like, too when he said it. Maybe this whole scenario with her him marrying uh, Sansa yeah, was, gave him more of a yeah uh, you know, sympathy to the north. Yeah, that's why I said yeah. Varys is the only one that really. Th now, don't get me wrong. When like when that Sir Marin came up there and said about when he slapped Joffrey into this and that, it was only one side of the story. And Tyrion mm -hmm. was trying to go and say, yeah, but you were you had a cross you had a crossbow injury, you were pulling her clothes, or you guys were going to rape her and beat her. So that what I'm saying is, is that those things that were said, they they were things that were said and that happened, but there wasn't yeah. the other side of the story to give you the full context of, of why those things were said and in what context they were said. You know, so until Varys came out and, and straight up lied, you know what I mean? Um, as far as I was concerned, you know, the way he came out with things, and uh, and then of course Shay was just the, the icing on the cake, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shay was. I said I mean, your line started with certain trial. Ugh. I hope that Sir Marin gets stabbed in the face, man. Like, and he doesn't die. I hope he gets stabbed right in the face. You know what I mean? So. I've, been, I've been waiting for him for a while. Yeah. He'll probably, he'll probably die soon. <laughs> so I, I hope so. He's, he's, he's just the definition of fodder. That's, yeah. that's Sir Marin right there. He's, a lot of the King's God really suck, though. Marin fucking <laughs> Marin fucking Fron and this other guy. So, yeah. It's like fodder and all the King's God. It's pretty funny. Uh, but, okay. The best part of the episode was was Tyrion just going off, and this is gonna be my thumbnail because Rick gave me this this little quote with Tyrion's face thumbnail. It's amazing. I am guilty. Of, I, I'm guilty of far more monstrous crime. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. That is so. And then and then good. when Tywin goes and he says, "You're not on trial for being a dwarf," <laughs> he's just like, "Yes, I have always been it. on trial. My entire life, I've been on trial." Being yeah. a and it's the truth. This whole scenario. The only reason why he gets treated the way he is is because of the way he looks. The only reason why he's in this position he is right now is because of the way he looks. Any other person that's not a dwarf would have been like made into a fucking god after what happened with Blackwater. He would be just like the, the hero of the people if he wasn't a dwarf. The well, because, why, yeah, because Tyrion's always looked at him as like you know as like this uh, the stain on his lineage. Right, and I mean, right. he even said that he would have killed mm -hmm. him if he could have, but it would have been the wrong thing to do to kill a Lannister because he's technically a Lannister, you know. So right. that was you know. So he's been looking for a reason to off him, you know. For, and <laughs> for all this these was years. a perfect scenario for Tywin because either he, or either he dies. Or he goes to the wall. Either way, yeah. he's rid of him. Finally, yeah. no more yeah. Tyrion. Is well, and they, and they have a scapegoat because you gotta you gotta understand that as much as Joffrey was hated, you still have to show that you're in power by going and bringing someone to justice for this horrendous act that happened to the king. You know what I mean? Right, you can't right. you can't let the realm hear about that Joffrey was poisoned or killed under mysterious circumstances and that nobody hangs for it. Nobody takes yeah. the rap. I, I think so. The main motivation for this with Ty Tywin was to get rid of Tyrion. I think yeah, that yeah. he was just tired of it. I think that... Because remember, too, Tywin's like... It says, I'm at the end of my life. My last thing in life is being Hannah the King. Yeah. He wants to set up his legacy to continue. Well, that's why and, I think he played Jamie into his hand, because right. he set the trial yeah. up, and he allowed it to be a farce. He allowed all the shit to happen. He knew it was going to come forth from Cersei and her wrath and everything like that, and he allowed it to happen, so it would put him in that position because he wanted to get Jamie. Because remember, in the, in the when he gave Jamie the sword in the season opener, he wanted him to go and, you know, hey, listen, you're, you're a cripple now. You just got back from being... You know, being a prisoner for a year and this that you're gonna go to Castle Rock, take your rightful place. We're gonna let you out of your King's Guard oath thing, right? Because the king that you were serving is dead, blah blah blah. And you know, and, and he, obviously he, he 
<laughs> he turned his back on his family and said, no, I'm not going to do that. But Tywin looks at that as, I think this whole thing it was set up, you can get rid of Tyrion, kill him or send him off to the wall, and you can sucker Jaime into being your heir again. So you have Lannisters to carry on your, your lineage and your bloodline. So, yeah, again, Tywin, exactly. the smartest motherfucker on the show. Tyrion, though, that look well, on, this, the other look of disdain on Tywin's yeah. face, like, you little motherfucker. <laughs> like, that's what Tyrion should have said. Check me. Trial yeah. by combat. Now what? Now it begs well, the question. Well, well, was Rick 100% right? Is, um, no yeah, one like, I, I mean, if you knew what was going to happen and he was in his position. Would you would have taken that offer and go to the wall? No. No? no. So, if, if you met I mean, that, I'm like, like, I, like, you might get death. I mean, but you could also yeah. get off. You know, it's a 50 50 chance, I guess, right? I mean, it's one will, fight. You know? I, know, I think Tyrion at that point doesn't care. But he's gonna stick it to his dad, no matter. Like he's not gonna go out like that because he's gonna go down swinging. Right. Okay. Exactly. But let's think about it though. Let's just say that there is a tribal combat, which there's gonna be obviously, and the person yeah. that Tyrion picks wins. What happens to Tyrion, the Tyrion at that point? He he's off scot free. Tyrion got yeah, free. Off scot free. But are they really gonna let him get off scot free? By law, they have to. By law, yeah. but. And something like that's going to be seen and heard by so many people that I, I think that's going to be a hard one to cover up. But but yeah, I get what you're saying though. Are they really going to? Well, let him, well, you know? well, I think they're going to probably going to give him a really hard challenge to fight. You know, for for trial of combat. Well, yeah, obviously, if you look I mean, at the, people, choosing, the mountains, their champion. That's yeah. 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 Well, and plus, if, too, if, somebody if points, Jamie. Can well, can Hollywood take away his choice? Or is but it see, he the thing is, though, Tyrion's not going to choose Jamie. Tyrion's not going to choose Jamie because right. he knows that Jamie can't fight. Yeah, but maybe Jamie will like volunteer anyway. Jamie may volunteer, but I think yeah, he's not going to put him in that position either. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, Tyrion's first pick is going to be Braun. Absolutely, it's going to yeah, be Braun. Fool, yeah, you're Yeah. Unless the mountains pick first, and he's like, oh, well, the, the mountain is well, that, picked. That's what I'm <laughs> as, as, far, as far as I know, the mountain is always the champion for the realm. Whenever there's a trial by combat, that's what that's what I had learned in one of those one of those things that I was watching the the extra DVD features. Oh, really? So okay. the mountain is always the is, is always for however long Robert Baratheon was in power, I guess, and maybe even before that because he was under rule of of Tywin Lannister. So maybe even back when Tywin was hand of the king and stuff. I don't know. That's just what I heard. So, and then I think, as far as him being able to choose Jamie, I think that would be a conflict of interest, and they wouldn't allow him to because Jamie has sworn an oath to be loyal to the crown and to the king, and right. he's on and he's on trial for killing the king. So I think that that's yeah, no, we're we're not going to allow that one to happen. Gotta be over, man. That's the, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah because, then, I, mean, I mean, they show the previews and stuff. I mean, it has to be open. It really does that. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we, about the it has to be open, but I'm just saying, like, why would Tyrion would be stupid if he chose Jamie? Yeah. Knowing what he knows, and he's only been training with Braun for a, what a couple weeks. Yeah, it's only two candidates: Braun. You, know, you don't want his own brother over him. Right. Yeah, but no, I mean, you are, yeah, you can honor your brother, but I want to stay alive too. So yeah, I know. It's really and nice think about it. Game. Think about it. When when uh, as soon as Tyrion said trial by combat, you saw it over and move up in his chair like. <laughs> And how about Oberyn and, and how about Oberyn and, and, and check this out, check this out. Though. I love the way Oberyn was just sitting back, like he was just like this the whole time. Yeah, look yeah. at these fucking. No, I don't blame Oberyn because most of the stuff that Oberyn is doing, he was I enjoying was, this shit. Like he was all asking all kinds of questions and stuff. Yeah, like, what did you know, say? Well, did you? Did, did, did you well, he, like he never did Yeah, that, that part did was you? awesome. That was one of the only things that he said in there. And then, of course, too, when he said about Maester Pycelle, he's like, yeah, you have an extensive amount of poisons. We get it, you know? But yeah. but he's, he's, he's up there with a shit-eating grin on his face because it's a win-win situation. The fucking yeah. Lannisters are fighting against each other. He just wants to mm -hmm. see them burn. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So... Uh, so him getting to have the trial by combat too against the mountain, the, the mountain's the one he wants to take out anyway. And Tywin already promised him that he'd give him that face-to-face -face talk with the mountain, which I don't know if you guys read between the lines, but that basically meant I'm gonna set you up and you can go and fuck him up if you want, man. I'm gonna set up the backyard fight after school, four o'clock behind the gymnasium. You know? <laughs> and that's, and so, so that's why I feel like now it's got to be over it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Oberyn wants that. He wants that 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 you know uh, that payback, you know, against the mountain. And like I said, he comes out on. Top, you know, so, but the whole trial though is great. And then when he goes, he's well, did you fuck? Because it comes to a sexual question, right? Oberyn speaks up. So, uh, did you fuck him? And then she's like, oh, I let him do this and put this there, and I let him stick his finger up my ass and everything else. And she's going into all this stuff, and it's just like, just stop, you know, just stop. You're you're already a whore. We we get it, you know. So, but Oberyn though is sick, man, with his line, right? <laughs> so, did you fuck him? <laughs> like it was his last night. Oh. Got a bad thing that intrigues me. So, uh, he made that question. <laughs> 
Oberyn's got his next target. That's what well, because Oberyn's looking. Oh, Oberyn's oh, looking oh, at oh, Tyrion, oh, and he's, Oberyn's like, man, man, I've, I've had men, I've had women, I ain't had no midget, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Oberyn's thinking. No, no. Oberyn's good. He asks the important questions in life. <laughs> hey, that's what I say. He's one, of, he's, he's one of my favorites, man. He always asks interesting questions or bring out interesting dialogue. And he's a great actor too. He he's does. He's always got some shit to well. say, man. He, so. he, he plays it, plays it really well. So, um, any other thoughts on the trial that we didn't quite cover? Because I'm about to get to some comments. So we've been kind of neglecting them a bit. So, uh, anything else? No, no, man. I'm, I'm good. good. First right. Right. Let's try to get quite a couple of comments. I've been looking at them. Yeah, so any other questions, Rick, that you see in the comments? Oh, good. So uh, just more statements. Um, yeah, more statements, yeah, yeah. Um, apparently the stuff with the, the the bones of the child was not meant for this episode. So, okay. Te- technically I got a little spoiled there, but it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, that is true that everything that was said is necessarily true, but taken out of context. So it kind of seems like Tyrion kind of fucked himself over in a lot of respects. Uh, when it comes to this trial, but still, we all know that that was, you know, said is either one-sided argument or was taken a bit out of context. Come on. Um, There's no way he was defending himself. <laughs> yeah, it's I, mean, that, I mean, do you really want? He went to the wall. He knows how shitty and bleak and crappy it is there. Do you really want to go to the fucking wall? <laughs> Especially no, but no. Someone actually made a good point. Like, all right, that is a good way to really put Tywin against the wall because if he picks Jamie. And Jamie accepts, then t- potentially Tywin loses both his heirs. Yeah, what true. would he do? Mm. Mm-hmm. That is true. So there is, I guess, some yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you must be able to overrule the picks. You must be able to. Yeah. See, I mean, would, would Tywin? I mean, Tywin has. How would he call it off? I mean, what, what would Tywin do? Yeah. That is a very good point. But who gets to choose the the? First, like when we saw the trial by combat in the Vale, they picked their champion first, and then the the, the challenger chose their champion afterwards. Is that how yeah. it always is, or I just don't know how exactly it works? Yeah, we've only seen one, mm. right, right? But based on that, I guess that's the only thing that we've seen, so it's the only one we can really go by. The person that that's the the pl- the, the plaintiff, I guess you could say, um, or the the judge, whatever, chooses their champion first. So I, I can't see anybody else but the, the mountain being chosen. Yeah, uh, I, 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 mean, I agree. I agree. I mean, as far as for the accuser, I mean, he can ask anybody to be his champion, but that's the only thing they agreed upon, which is yeah. probably going to be interesting that if he asks over him because, you know, he's one of the ones that, that he tends to go not the, you know, the general answer. So he probably might like, okay. He's always okay, going to say yes. I'll, I'll, I'll challenge him. He's <laughs> always going to say yes. The chance to kill the mountain... Legally, yeah. yes. I'll do that. Thank yeah, you. And, and in front of everybody in the court too. Oh, and, fuck and, yeah, and, dude. And, and to get and to piss off Tywin more, like that, that fucking messes with. Oh Tywin yeah, so much. yeah, he, absolutely. Yeah, because then he gets his. I think, I think um, Oberyn is going to kill Tywin because he. I think he's been gunning for him for most compared to all the rest of the Lannisters. Yeah, he knows that Tywin is responsible for her death. He knows. I, I think I think Oberyn's smart enough to find a way to get Tywin out of the picture or to get Tywin. I don't think Oberyn's going to actually kill him himself. I think it's going to wind up being something where he's going to. I don't know. It's a, it's a theory, I guess, for another time. But uh, but yeah. I, but I, I believe that Oberyn too. If uh, it, he'll he'll be responsible for Tywin's downfall in one way, shape, or form. You know. Uh, that's how I feel. So somebody put in the comments though too that Arya uh, talked with Littlefinger during the jousting tournament in season one. So that was when Arya. That was when Arya met Littlefinger because it, when when she was uh, being Tywin's little you know cupbearer in season two when she was at Harem Hall and Littlefinger came there, she had to avoid him the entire time and kept turning and came away from him because obviously Littlefinger would recognize her and be like, hey, why you got one of the Stark girls here, you know? So, right. but uh, anyway, I just noticed it. I was looking in the comments. So. Well, I forget the jousting thing, but I mean, I, I don't. I take that scene with a grain of salt because it, it's filler. Hmm. So. But I, I, I did forget about I don't I don't remember Arya seeing Littlefinger at the Justin tournament. Uh, I'm read the book. Uh, See, the funny part is, is when people say things like that, especially if you haven't read the books. How does that even make sense? You don't you don't take you take it with a grain of salt because it's filler. This isn't it's like cool. with an, this is like with anime from manga where they got to keep true. the show going. You know what I mean? This is stuff that 
if you look and you see these two guys, this D.B. Weiss and David Benloff, those guys and and uh, and what's his name, uh, George R. R. Martin, are the only three people on earth that know how this is going to end. Martin has been sitting down working closely with them, and they've been adapting it to what they, with his guidance, to what they think will translate right. best into a TV show. Exactly. I've been watching all kinds of behind the stuff, scenes stuff with these guys. So this filler that's been put in, it, it's not filler in the sense of what we would. What we would could normally constitute filler as, you know what I mean? I think a lot of it has right. little ask important answer parts. Me this, ask, answer me this: Why was the rape scene never addressed ever again? Why was the rape scene never addressed again? Why, why did Cersei and Jamie go right back to normal, even though Jamie raped Cersei? Because I'm assuming that I'm assuming because that the scene was, I'm, I'm assuming the scene was just portrayed poorly. Poor, you know exactly. I, mean? I don't was, think in the books, like I said, it wasn't actually rape. It was. Yeah. It was but in the somewhat show, mutual. Right. In the show, it was. Well, in the show, it was. It was like, like Jim said, it could have been a situation where they were trying to portray it like it was in the books, but they made a mistake. They just didn't portray it well enough to make it seem like she really, really wanted it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a poor execution. More like rape in the show than it did in the books, apparently. So uh, maybe it was just a bit bad job of filming it. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I do want to uh, answer an interesting comment by Up in Flames. He says, "But wouldn't it Oberyn not be able to fight because he's one of the judges at the trial? Like conflict of interest." Ah, that's true. Maybe. Hmm. I hope that's not true. <laughs> I really do. No, I'm um, not sure. I'm putting my money on the mountain and Oberyn, though, just because I I, I'm, I just want to see that battle. <laughs> so, I love to see that battle. Same here. Same here. I mean, we know, Oberyn's, we know Oberyn's a bad uh, motherfucker Oberyn. already. You know. Right. Over over. I want to see his conversation bad. with uh, various Oberyn. Various asked over him why is he how is he so familiar with the unsolid, and he said he's traveled around the world. You know he's traveled around the narrow sea, and it. I mean, one could assume maybe he's learned a thing or two, because Zaladin told me over him is a beast on the battlefield, like the, all the dawn men, the dawn men. That's like they're well, no, yeah. they're, they have a very well, strong military. Well, and first of all, we know that he's he's like the Stannis of the family. He's the war veteran. You know, we know that he's the younger brother, the the second prince, but he's the one that's known for being a beast on the battlefield. And when he was in the, introduced at the beginning of this season, I mean, in between going and picking out boys and girls for his fucking orgy, he went out and just like just straight up, just like annihilated the the one uh, a Lannister guy. And I mean, wound up hitting him. And <laughs> I mean, he was quick, quick and slick, man, with his shit. You know, he's like. Yeah, swords take too long to pull, you know, for a uh, you know for a close battle and everything. So I I think Oberyn, yeah, I, I think he's a guy that uh, that definitely I want to see fight somebody, you know, like the mountains. So that's why I think uh, it'd be a great battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely true. Uh, so we're gonna I have a, actually have to get going soon, so maybe I answer a few more questions, uh, give our thoughts on what the preview and what we think is gonna happen uh, next episode, and then I think we can probably wrap this up. So get your comments, your questions, all that kind of stuff in. Uh, right now, if you can. So um, let's just go over some of these comments here. Um, so I I'm so confused. Like, uh, I, I just can't see Tyrion picking Jamie unless he has a choice to pick first. Then he'll pick Jamie. Then that will kind of put Tywin in a bad position to like say, okay. Uh, I don't want anyone that can kill Jamie, so I'm going to pick someone that's going to lose <laughs> or something along those yeah. lines. And, and plus, too, I mean, I don't really think that Tyrion... Not, Tyrion realizes how much Jamie cares for him and what, he, what great lengths he went to, so I don't think Tyrion had put him in that position. Right. You know? so it I just can't doesn't... See it. It's like it's like on one hand it makes sense because it's the emotional thing to do, but on the other hand the logical thing is is nah, dude. It's my one-handed brother who was once the greatest swordsman in the land, but now he's learning. You know, he's a broken man learning how to fight with his left hand, and I don't want my brother to get killed. You know, I mean, he already put his life on the line for me to try to get me this deal going to the wall. So, so yeah. I, I think that's why Tyrion chooses somebody other than him, and I'm hoping. I mean, it's yeah, I mean, the only three choices that he can probably go when I think of is either Oberyn, Bronn, or um, himself. Probably he's gonna try and win <laughs> out of combat. That's yeah. when we want to see him fight. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the axe again. Oh, did yeah. he give it away? He gave it to Podrick. The axe. So yeah. He can't know it, right? mm -hmm. I can't see him fighting, obviously, but um, no. yeah, it's, it's, it's got, I can't I can't think of it, anything else. But being yeah, because I mean that's his right. Like he has the right, like to either fight himself, I and mean, that goes along with the whole trial by combat. Then you have the right to either choose your own champion or fight for yourself. And then you can't take that away from him. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Very true. Um, people are saying they like the way that Tyrion is being darker in the show. Uh, I, I just don't see what after, like I, I'm pretty sure Tyrion's not gonna die. Like I really hope that's not gonna happen. I really do. So uh, assuming he doesn't die and he gets out of this scot free, 
what do you see going with his character going forward? What do you see his character doing? Uh, maybe moving to some other place. Maybe uh, I, I, he can't live in King's Landing. He's going to be disowned by everyone and just hated and disgusted. Uh, what do you see for Tyrion's character going forward? That's my question to you guys. Learning what the real world is like without the money, without the power. Learning how to be, and it would be a really, it would be like that whole from, it would be like the whole from prince to proper kind of story, mm. where you 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 under you learn what it's like on the other side of the uh, of the tracks. Yeah, I guess I can see that. Um, I was gonna say what I'm really curious is, let's say he wins, right? I wonder what he's gonna do after next. I mean, he could leave King's Landing. I mean, you know, King's Landing has always been out to get him for like the longest. I mean, yeah, no, no, regardless, I mean, I think it's given that once this is over, he's leaving King's Landing. Yeah. That, I mean, I think that's kind of a, I mean, but like I said, I mean, he obviously won't have money. He won't have, the, the, the name will, you know, and everything. So it literally will be like living on the other side of the tracks. He will know what it's like to, I think, like, if anything, remember the conversation between him and John about bastards and dwarfs? Mm-hmm. He'll truly know what it is to be a bastard. Like how to how to deal with that kind of life. Uh, you, you could be right about that. I think it could go that route. And for some strange reason, I think he maybe in some shape or form, you know, after um, Tywin dies, I think he might become the heir to the throne, like just by default. Maybe he, like comes back okay. or whatever and rules over you, Castle. You that that's a possibility, and it's just the way it should happen. But I don't think the rest of the of Lannister family would get would. Because like the Lannister family could easily revolt and like no, nah, we're not accepting Tyrion as the head of the family. And if you can have the title, but if no one's going to back you up as the head of the family, well, then they're going to take I you out. No one to back I mean, claim. How, who who would have to die in order for Tyrion to be next in line for the crown? Yeah, yeah, I think Jamie, he's about to stand right now. Know. Know. Jamie's a Kingsguard. Yeah, as long as Jamie's right. a Kingsguard, yeah, I think Ty, I think Tyrion still gets it. Yeah, be no, I'm talking, about, right. I'm talking about the king. Like, like crown, no, a Tyrion, Tyrion has no claim to the throne. Uh, no, not throne. whatsoever. It, what if the king, they're, 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 talking, they're talking about Castle Rock and taking over the I, I know that, I'm just saying, like, oh. uh, who who would be be the the king in case uh, uh, Tommen dies, for example? Ew, that, that would right fall there. to Tywin, because Tywin is uh, Hannah the King, so if Tommen dies and there's no heir... He would be named. He wouldn't be king, but he would be Lord uh, Protector of the Realm. All right, what if Tywin does? Then they're fucked. Cersei. What if, Cersei, what if Tommen, Cersei chooses a, a, a Cersei? I would assume that's never. I mean, Cersei's I don't know. She has no. She has the. She has the power to name. Yeah, king. but if there's no hand of the king, I'm sure they no, have a hierarchy, just like we have in the government: the president, the yeah. vice president, the speaker of the house, the you know that sort of thing. There's probably a, a list of people that that it would go down that are all already in power. You know. Uh, whether it be those that are on the small council, or whether it be you know others that maybe have a birthright to it, I I, don't, I think it'd be a long line, a long list though. I think before Tyrion would get a, a legitimate shot at. No, but I mean, if, if Tommen dies, right, and and then Tywin is king, then wouldn't his heir be king after him? No, because he's only the temporary king. It's kind of like when the vice president comes in when the president gets killed. The vice president okay. just takes over for the rest of that term until they can find a replacement. Okay. So basically, he'd be protector of the realm until they went, and I don't know. I don't know if at that point it would go to a vote. I don't know if it would well, go actually, to. Actually, if I remember correctly, in like medieval hierarchy, if you look at like if the king dies, and then it's you know whatever. Obviously, in normal mind, they don't have like a hand of the king, but the, the power does fall to the queen, even if so, she's the quote unquote queen regent. She's still the acting queen. So either she would she would be able to marry, and the person she marries would be king. It probably would be something like that. Huh. Yeah. So uh, I would ask in the comment section because you guys that read the books probably know better or know more about the, uh, you know, the whole the hierarchy and the, the ranking system. I guess you could say whatever you want to call it uh, in the Game of Thrones world. You can put that in the comments because I'm a little confused. But that that what you're saying, Rick, does make a lot of sense. It makes sense. There's definitely. I, I was thinking maybe possibly Tyrion could get lucky and become king and be hated, but no, it seemed like probably not. Uh, <laughs> He'd I have a step stool and get up into the throne. It'd be great. I just thought uh, that would be a funny scenario if that was possible. It you know, would be right. awesome. <laughs> um. Oh, actually, Stannis will be king if Baratheon's kids die. That's what that's what X Wing says. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Because he, he, he's just still, wants, he's, he just wants Stannis to win. No, because no, he's an actual sense. he's an actual living Baratheon. Because it always yeah. goes to the kids. But if the kids are dead or you have no kids, then it goes to the next uh, in line as far true. as uh, the sibling. Stannis yeah. would be next. Yeah, so but Stannis would, would be next if they were right down. And then you crown. Would that still apply though? Because all intents and purposes, Stannis is an outlaw. So well, that has to be taken into consideration too. I mean, then that would definitely increase his cause, though. Yeah, you know what I'm it, <laughs> that would definitely I mean, help his cause. Like no one could really deny Stannis' claim to the throne. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 mostly the council that's denying his, his, um, you know, you know, his, you know. His well, well, the, yeah, I think there are a lot of people that definitely think that Stannis deserves to be king. I mean, I think the people, the actual people, who don't like Stannis at all. That was said yeah. by Renly. That's why they went back to Renly. Yeah, you know, and, and, even, and I, if they don't like him, I'm like, they got almost got no choice unless he just, you know. Well, if he had the army and the people to bring no, him you're, up. No, you're right in that sense, but all right, imagine how difficult it is to manage a kingdom where your people are, are constantly you know, defying you or not supporting you. That's a very fucked up situation. Even if you do have this mass army, you have to spend a large amount of resources to controlling the people. You know what I mean? He'd so probably be more well-liked than Joffrey. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So, because I mean, at this point, like Marjorie's left tit is better than Joffrey ruling. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, of course, you, Marjorie's you know, left tit is better. Look how many right problems right they here. had to deal with because the people did hate Joffrey. They literally almost got literally torn apart in a riot. Yeah, because over a hundred strikes. Yeah. So I mean, that the the people's favor does play a role, and that's something that Margie was trying to teach Joffrey. Yeah, it was to yeah, it was to go and show a little kindness and actually right. gain the favor of the people, you know. So mm -hmm. that that's definitely important. <laughs> that's why you know they uh, Daenerys didn't go over there right. You know, she was hesitant to go over and obviously cross the narrow sea because we don't know if she'll get to have the support. Um, yeah. The claim to the throne is just as important as your power and your force. Um, exactly. The people. So uh, even though pe people don't really like Stannis, his claim to the throne, like he said, he's the best claim. He has the best mm -hmm. claim. Uh, blood, yeah. He does. He does. They're not blood. like I think most people in. I mean, I don't, I don't know how smart the typical person in Game of Thrones is, but I think it's pretty obvious that that, that uh, Jamie and uh, Cersei's kids are Tommen and fucking uh, obviously King Joffrey that obviously is dead now. I, I would think that most people would be able to put two and two together. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyed kid. Doesn't normally come from enough. I think it's but like anything, know. though. It's really just it's it's who's in power at the time. So I mean, for the for the and who can who has for the power to take that you know what it, what it is what they want by force because you know Ned Stark thought he'd be okay with a with a signed piece of paper from from Robert Baratheon you know and thought that he was going to take the high road and do the honorable thing and you saw what happened to him. So it, nobody really seems to follow you know blood rights or claims because if you go back to it, then you know the actual claimant to the throne would be Daenerys because the Targaryens were were taking. He was taken out, regardless of him being a mad king. He was taken out of power, and and no, even no, Robert Baratheon said no people claim whatsoever because a woman cannot have a claim to a, to a, to an entitlement like that. A woman cannot rule in Westeros. Okay. Well, maybe that's where the Jon Snow thing will come into. Someone exactly. someone puts out yeah. a great point. Someone says the, one of his bastards could have claimed the throne. So the the blacksmith, um, Gendry. Uh, Gendry. He he, I guess he has technically the biggest claim to the throne, but I just don't see how that's gonna work out. But yeah, the thing about Stannis too that works against him is you gotta remember if Stannis gets into power, he, it's obvious he, Melisandre is gonna have him force everyone to confirm to the Lord of Light, and I think that's honestly I think that's one of the main reasons why the people don't like Stannis because of his affiliation with Melisandre. I don't think though Stannis takes the throne that he's gonna burn people alive and to make them change. I don't think he'll be as extreme because he still has the win over the the, the people. After he becomes king, um, he can't just you know be tyrannical. As I don't know his loyalty to Melisandre. Though. I mean, we haven't seen nothing yet. But I mean, you have he. I mean, he has both a devil and angel on his shoulder. You know. Yeah, but he's he looks to the devil. What the devil? But he looks to the devil. He looks to his angel. That's, that's true. But, but, but check this out. If he wins, he he knows it's all to the you know the Lord of Light because you know, exactly. He's... Yeah, that's the scary part with Stannis. I do think Stannis, outside of the Lord of Light, his devotion to that. He is the best leader for the. I mean, the Red now. Queen still could die though. Uh, throughout all of this, we we know Arya has it out for. Her. <laughs> we know that she has a lot of enemies, so we don't know what's gonna happen with her. So we'll see. We'll yeah. See.
we'll definitely see. That's definitely an interesting plot point. Like I was saying before, and X Wing might like this. I, I like something about Stannis, man. You may not be most charismatic. You may not be necessarily the most logical at times. It does make some some emotional decisions with the whole lot of life thing. Yeah, he's not There's the flashiest about. man, but yeah, there is something about him, man, that does. He's it, uh... that dude, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the way he was like on the front lines. Like, like you, he he knows what he wants, and he and he strives for it. I respect him. I'm yeah, he got the devotion, man. He does. He got the devotion. So I'm just uh, I'm just excited, man. Each week, and I wanted to mention too uh, that uh, next week's episode. After that, we're gonna have a one week break uh, because of the uh, Memorial Day weekend. So between episodes yeah. seven and eight, they're gonna skip a week. You know, so we'll we'll be on next week, of course, for episode seven. But then we're gonna have to wait for that because uh, as far as as far as I know and how everything is gonna be played out, that trial by combat will wind up coming in probably the eighth or ninth episode. So <laughs> we gotta wait a little bit longer for it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. That's true. We'll we'll see how it goes. What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, so we're done with the question. Uh, next episode. Um, I, the preview uh, is still a little. I forget what happened exactly in the preview. Oh, I knew that. Uh, 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 I think it was Liza had uh, had um, Sansa. Sansa, thank you very much. Sansa over the like the little hole and the <laughs> threading the throw over. Uh, so <laughs> what's going to happen with yeah, that? The, the moon door or whatever. Yeah. yeah, the moon door. She was holding her over the moon door, and she's still jealous as fuck. I, I think Liza next episode could die. I just yeah. don't see her living much longer. Li- yeah, Liza's a couple sandwiches shy of a good picnic, man. She is yes. fucked up in the head, dude. Yes. So, I, 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 she's, she's stage done. five clinger, man. You know. <laughs> I think it's too soon. I think it's too soon. I think he's still... I don't no it, it might be too soon. They did consummate their marriage, but... Right. Yeah, she might stick around for a little while, but you got to remember, too, that because of only having 10 episodes in a season, this is truly one of those uh, one of those shows that could, could do with, like, a 12 or 14 episode season because, because there's so many different strings to follow, you know? Listen, so. Littlefinger's climbing that ladder, man. <laughs> He's not looking to, to buy time. time. Listen, <laughs> he wants, he wants the veil. He has the opportunity right now to take the veil for himself. He has it. It's under his control right now. Just needs to get rid of some loose ends. Liza is a threat to him because you know what's funny about John Aaron. I mean, the, the interesting Long thing is, since, since he already got the veil, I mean, that could be all set for him. But he actually want more, a lot more. I know. You know. That's just step one or step two. He I wants know. it all. He <laughs> wants everything. Right. And he's willing to risk, risk everything to get it. But being Lord of the Veil is a good start. It's a good start. So. Uh, I think it's gonna happen. I mean, plus, like I said, I think I think that Liza needs to die before Arya gets there, so that they can make their way to Bravos. So Liza's gonna die any time now. They're almost there to the Vale. Yeah. I don't think, I don't it think would it know. would make sense though because he's because his he's too smart to go. He's he got Sansa out of there because Sansa is gonna be is if he marries her, he could be the Lord of the North, you know, as well. So uh, he, he's looking to move in on everything, man. So he's playing a, a dangerous game of Monopoly. I mean, he's doing. I mean, if we, he's, he's he doing marries her. I think that's going to okay. send red flags to people. Very red what? flags. Well, the problem is, as far as anyone knows, she's not she's not there, obviously. So yeah, yeah, that's, um, it, that's, that's if it's public. No, you know, that's if it's public. You know, knowledge. I mean, he can't keep the soldiers in the veil, but who knows if you know? He, people like he may not care people. about the North, and I mean, cause I don't think his infatuation with Sansa has anything to do with her claim. Or her affiliation with the North. It's more with his, her, her mother. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Like he loved, he loved. He doesn't seem like he has that kind of lust for her though. Yeah. I think he just sees it as a used tool to use. Yeah, I don't think he wants to stick his little finger in her. So. We've seen we've seen worse in the show. But I mean, honestly, like, he has an impenetrable fortress right now in the Vale that he can stay in and be safe for as long as he needs to. So if he marries Sansa, then. I mean, that gives him control of the North. He can use the North to attack uh, King's Landing if he wants to while he sits pretty in his little cozy uh, little place there in, in, in the Vale. But then but then again, would he need to go to the North? I don't know, but he'd control the Vale and the North, which are two of the seven kingdoms or areas or that are you right. know, of Westeros. So he's got he's got a pretty big chunk of land over there. you know. Yeah, and, and, but, but then as soon as he marries Sansa, he's basically, at that point, declaring war on... King's Land. Yeah, because is he at, ready? at that point he is, yeah, but you have to remember how many people are still butthurt over the Red Wedding in the north, throughout the Vale, throughout the Riverlands, people that were loyal to the Tullys and to the Aarons and to the to the Starks. You know, they're now now remember Rob Stark pissed off the Car Starks and they wound up splitting from him. But there's still a lot of people that you know that, that didn't get killed at the Red Wedding that wound up dissipating after they had no leader. 
But if there's a leader, and hey, you know what I mean, now we're going to go and take back the throne, you know. Uh, yeah, but I agree with that. But I was saying, it's, it, it, if he marries um, Sansa, that's going to bring a lot of, you know, red flags to King's Landing. They still think also, part of the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty- Tywin gave that's Bolton true. the north. But, and by by claim by if he was to marry Sansa and make a claim to the north, that would put him in direct conflict with Bolton, who would actually who would technically put that in direct conflict with Tywin. And mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think Littlefinger is ready to do direct moves like that because he's still working in the shadows. Yeah, I'm not saying yet. I'm just saying that when he does, you know, that's going to go yeah. and uh, that, that's that it's, it's ultimately it's going to throw a lot of people uh, on his side, on his side of the fence, really, I, right. I think. You know what I mean? So there's going to be a lot of old grudges that are going to come from the Red Wedding and those people that were marching on King's Landing to right. take the bastard out of, uh, you know, Joffrey out of uh, out of power, you know, so. I mean, he might wait. He might wait until, uh, first, I mean, I, I don't think he's going to wait to kill Lies. I don't think so. But he you might think that's wait happening soon? That's, 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 that's Zoro's call? All right. I'm calling it right now. That's happening soon. One or two episodes next. Yeah, I think it's going yeah, to happen this season. But sure. Sansa, marrying Sansa, I think it might happen, but not for a while. I think it might take a little time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think, I think it's more of an end game. I think it's more of an end game than it is, you know, something uh, to happen I mean, right now. So. I mean, to be honest, I don't see how much longer the, the Lannisters can really be left alive uh, for the most part. Uh, uh, Tyrion, I feel like he's gonna get out of the situation and, and go move on with his life. Uh, and while that's had, or after that happens, either Stannis or or Daenerys or someone's gonna burn them all and fucking kill them all. I just I just don't see them surviving much longer. And that might give the opportunity that that Littlefinger needs to to either go for the North or go for King's Landing afterwards. Who knows? But I think that Littlefinger's gonna wait for that opportunity. Uh, so not to get into com- conversations with both Ruth, Ruth Bolton and the, the, the King's Landing at the same exact time. So we'll see. He's a smart guy. He's not going to make mistakes, Littlefinger. So we'll see what he does. But um, I think on that note, uh, any other any stuff from the, the previews that uh, caught your eye? I don't remember a lot from the previews. I'm just yeah. looking forward to seeing more about Arya and the Hound, hopefully. And, and, of course, you know, going back to the Vale and seeing how some of that plays out, you know. And, um, and then, of course, uh, there was, you know, a couple of other... Couple of other uh, groups that we didn't that we didn't quite see, you know, this week as well. So, That's true. Uh, you know, obviously everybody up in the north and what's going on at the wall and, and that sort of thing. So, um, oh, that's right. That's right. You know, so we'll probably check in with all them next week. I'm I'm presuming. Let's hope. Uh, Shot Red, what do you expect going forward uh, from this season? Uh, this I don't episode? know. From what I saw from that preview, it looked like something happened to the Hound. Like he really got wounded or injured or something like that, and Arya has to like help him out. I mean, the, the previews were going pretty fast. It's hard for uh, I couldn't catch everything what was going on. But I seen a little bit of that coming into play, and the things with Sansa dealing with her aunt and other things. All right. Uh, next, Rick. What do you expect from the next couple of episodes? Um, obviously, the trial by combat I think is going to be the highlight in the next couple of episodes. But I'm really hoping that they do address the night watch and we go back to that because. We know those. We got those raiders out there still. Those wiring raiders and those cannibals that are just destroying shit. And that, that hopefully that gets addressed by the end of the season too. Very good point. That is a very good point. So yeah, that's pretty much. I pretty much mirror what they have to say when it comes to that trial by combat. Uh, combat. I'm excited to see that. Like I said, my, my theory. Not really theory, but it's, I think it's pretty much inevitable. Lies is gonna be dying soon. <laughs> I don't know. That's the way I see it. Uh, I'm very excited to possibly see Oberyn and. And uh, obviously the the mountain go after go at it with each other. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. Let me see what you guys have to say about what's gonna happen next couple episodes in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe guys to everyone in here. All these guys are great reviewers. What they do, I respect all these guys. Uh, like the video if you liked it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for our Game of Thrones stream, guys. Got a couple things I need to do. So uh, that's it for me today. Uh, Jim, you can sign up and stay safe, guys. Hey, yeah, just always, always grateful to be here, man. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to next week, and uh, yeah. you know, and see, we see how things go down. So it's just a shame we're already more than halfway through the season, you know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so it goes by good. so quickly. <laughs> definitely, dude. Definitely. Um, yeah, I apologize that the stream was a little late today. Uh, I had a couple things I needed to do. Um, usually they're at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For anybody that's curious, on Mondays, Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, or, well, today's the one exception where it was 11 o'clock, but that rarely never happens. So, uh, yeah. Shop red. Say goodbye. No, I ain't nothing much to say, man. I'm, I'm like the, you know, the Jon Snow reviewer, you know, sitting behind the shadow. <laughs> the bastard out of Compton. All right. I like you're it. You're the main character, man. You're, uh, I'm telling you, you're going to be important, Mr. Snow. 
Well, I'll I'll play the little finger and make my move later. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. Thanks for um, you know, bringing me in here. You know, talking about Game of Thrones and various people and stuff. You know, it was really cool and stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say is you know, everybody have a you know, good time and you know, good night and stuff. All right, very nice, very nice. Uh, anime Rick. Um, perhaps I, I think this is without a doubt the best episode of the season. I didn't think the, the climb my life would be topped so early, but I think Tyrion's rant topped it. I, I think so. I think so because it was so powerful and so impactful. So but I, I still love both. Too. But um, outside of that, guys, there's a new show on Showtime called Penny Dreadful. Very good show. Definitely check it out and go on my channel. I did the review for the season premiere. Very good shit if you like like Victor Frankenstein, Dorian Gray. Oh, Stuff like sweet. that with classic monsters. Really good show. Really good show. Definitely check out my review for it. And that's pretty much all. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, I'll do my best. And if not, guaranteed, I'll put links to all these guys' channels in the description uh, after I edit this video and all that kind of stuff. So look, definitely, uh, after this video, there'll be links. You'll click on those and subscribe to all these good guys. They're all good reviewers. Um, I just did a video where I talked about uh, the anime community drama and my two cents on it. If you want to check that out, feel free to do so. That actually uploaded right before the stream started, so check that out. And uh, yeah, that's it for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm Zoro Fanboy124, and we're out. Peace.